Imagine a dark highway surrounded by endless forests and the sound of vehicles. But what if I told you that on these highways, truckers drive with dark secrets? Stories of encounters with strange people and strange roadside finds. Prepare for a ride full of fear and suspense, because tonight I reveal three chilling trucker stories you will never forget. A few years back, when I was still working as a driver for Costco, I had a remarkable adventure. It was around the same time of the year when the holidays were approaching, and we were making extra deliveries of toys to various locations. One day, we received an urgent request from a remote Costco store in rural Kentucky. They desperately needed a replenishment of their giant Spider-Man dolls. Because of my reputation as a fast driver, I was scheduled for a last-minute overnight trip. In the dead of the night, I loaded up my truck with the Spider-Man dolls and set course on Highway 265. Around 3 a.m., however, an uneasy feeling overtook me. Fatigue seemed to be the culprit. I drank some coffee I had brought with me in the hope of restoring my alertness. Fifteen minutes later, however, the road began to fog up abnormally, much worse than I had ever experienced. I decided to pull over and wait for the fog to clear. At that point, there was no other traffic on the road, and since I had plenty of time, I figured a short break wouldn't hurt. After standing still for a few minutes, my truck suddenly shut down. Everything went off. The lights, the engine, everything. I tried my CB radio but got no response. Even my mobile phone had no signal. As I sat there, wondering what to do, I started hearing a sound that started like a child crying and gradually changed to a woman crying. At least, so it seemed to my ears. Despite my imposing physique of 1.80 meters and 90 kilos, I had a great fear of leaving my cabin. Hesitantly, I turned down the window and asked in a trembling voice if anyone needed help. Immediately, the crying stopped and was replaced by something similar to grim laughter. It felt like that laughter was directed specifically at me. Quickly, I turned the window back up and the more frightened I became, the louder and more ominous the laughter sounded. And just as abruptly as it started, the laughter stopped. At that same moment, my truck restarted on its own, and the thick fog disappeared as if by magic. With my heart pounding like crazy, I accelerated and drove away from the place like a madman. At the next petrol station, I shot inside and rushed to the toilet. Splashing water over my face, I could only wonder in stunned disbelief. Did this really happen? My most common trip takes me from Vancouver to San Francisco. Normally, it is an easy route without too many challenges. I particularly prefer driving at night as there is less traffic on the road. But driving around in remote areas during late hours has shown me many strange things. UFOs, Bigfoot, the whole spectrum of mysterious phenomena. But none of it has ever made me feel as uncomfortable as the figures you see walking along the roadside far out in the wilderness. My first encounter was on a night drive south along Highway 5. It was a woman in a blue summer dress walking dead calmly along the highway, illuminated by the glow of the full moon. We were on a stretch of road that was miles away from any sign of life in either direction. I was most probably the first vehicle she had seen since the twilight, but she did not seem to pay any attention to my presence. She didn't even look up. She just walked on with a blank smile. At first I thought it might be an adventurous traveler who had picked up something from a nearby camping spot. So I just drove on but she was only the first. These kinds of sightings didn't happen every time I took the route, but sometimes I saw several figures at the same time. It always intrigued me because you never seem to see them during the day, or maybe they just don't stand out in the bright sunlight. Either way, once you know they are there, you start noticing them when driving through the remote areas at night. Other truckers call them moonwalkers, but I prefer the term shoulder walkers because they always seem to be walking along the road. Like trains on a track, they follow that white line to wherever they are going. They vary in age, gender, and appearance. Men, women, all kinds of people. And although they create an uncomfortable feeling, for a long time I paid no special attention to them, except when I noticed them in a split second as I drove by. But a few months ago, one evening deep in the night, I saw what looked like an old woman. She was wearing a hospital coat and looked as frail as someone in her last days. Her eyes were sunken in, her white hair frizzy, and her skin pale. She smiled the way grandmothers do when their grandchildren call them. She moved slowly across the hard shoulder, and just by looking at her, 
I could hear the sound of her hospital slippers on the gravel road. She gave me chills, but she also reminded me of my own dear grandmother. May she rest in peace. As best I could, I brought my truck to a stop and got out with the flashlight I kept in my glove compartment. Her footsteps were hearable before I saw her because I stopped a few meters in front of her. It was a shuffling sound. I could already see her wrinkled feet in front of me as she slowly approached. I quickly checked the Maps app on my phone and realized that the nearest town was more than 50 kilometers away. I tucked my phone into my jeans, raised my flashlight, and walked towards the sound of her footsteps. Hello, are you all right, ma'am? I called, hoping for a response. No answer, just that shuffling sound. My heart was pounding loudly now. Maybe she needs help, maybe she's confused, I muttered to myself. As she moved closer, her wrinkled hands slowly reached forward. Her fingers shivered in my direction, like a grandmother wanting to touch her grandchild. She opened her mouth, but no words came out, just that enduring smile on her pale lips. I didn't know what to do. My feet were glued to the ground. She came closer and closer, and at a distance of about ten meters, her skinny fingers started reaching for my side. Although I was scared, I sincerely hoped I would be able to help her. Once the old woman reached my side, she started touching me. Soon I realized that her touch was far from normal. Her hands felt stone cold, and she still did not speak a word. I was startled and quietly walked backwards. Then she put her hands by her sides again. Her smile remained glued tightly on her face, but her eyes now remained fixed on mine as she slowly disappeared into the darkness. As she continued her uninterrupted path along the side of the road, reduced with still the same speed. I remained standing. The sound of the old woman shuffling along gradually faded away. After what felt like an incredibly long period of time, I finally gathered enough courage to return to my truck. After getting into my cab and continuing on my way, it didn't take long for me to catch up with her. I looked at her and saw that her eyes were on me. Probably all along as she left my sight again. The last image I had of her was her thin, cracked lips pulled into a creepy grin. According to some other truckers I know, I am the first to have tried to deal with a shoulder runner. And if all goes well, I will be the last. Since that night, I have seen many more, walking down the highway in the dark. I even saw a child once, but I will never stop for them again. And if you are smart, neither will you. Since that one night, the shoulder walkers always look straight at me when I pass, something they never seem to do before. Almost as if they all see me since that old woman saw me. I don't even want to think about what might have happened if I hadn't managed to get loose. At least I can rest easy knowing that I made my warning public. Maybe I am saving a few people with this story. I was driving across a deserted stretch of Montana, heading east, when a sudden restlessness overtook me. The pitch black night meant I could see little to nothing and the road seemed to stretch on endlessly. My fuel meter dropped and I knew I urgently needed to fill up. The answer came with directions to the nearest petrol station that could help me. It wasn't exactly close, but I had no other choice. As I left the main road I found myself on an even darker road. There were no city lights and the moon was hiding behind thick clouds. It had been hours since I had seen another vehicle. I drove on as my headlights shined through the darkness, ready to take the exit to the petrol station. As I drove down the highway, a figure appeared in the distance, barely illuminated by my headlights. Instinctively braking, I got goosebumps as I approached the mysterious object. My heart raced as I passed it, but something forced me to hit the brakes and look back. My eyes were now focused on the ghostly silhouette in my brake lights. I wanted to know what it was, so I grabbed my jacket and flashlight, got out of the truck and walked slowly to the back of my trailer. That's when I saw it. A headless, skinless, skinny corpse lying on the road. I stood there in shock, my mind struggling to comprehend what lay before me. It was an unreal and horrifying sight. When I shined on the remains, I couldn't see anything around me because it was so dark, and that made it even scarier. What I saw were bones, ligaments, and a fully intact ribcage, but no fur, no clothing. It was as if something or someone had taken away the flesh. I considered calling the police, but my phone gave no signal. The nearest town was miles away, and I was in a chilling situation. As I put my phone away, 
I felt a growing sense that something was watching me, and it was. A group of coyotes had gathered at the end of the road, their eyes fixed on me. They walked through a broken fence and slowly approached me. Panic shot through me, and I retreated to the safety of my truck. As I drove away, the image of the remains stayed with me. I tried to understand what I had seen and told myself it must have been a deer or some other animal hit by a vehicle. Yet the memory of the bones and ligaments continued to haunt me, a mystery I could not solve. If you want to hear other stories, just click on this playlist or the next video and I'll see you there.